Hey, it's a regular guy. Man, I was just out messing around. I was actually going to the gym earlier and I was just uh, put my weapon just on my gym shorts and I was like, man, my holster's looking kind of raggedy. I was like, you know what, afterwards I, I may just make a new one and I'll make a video on it because uh, I make a lot of my own stuff. And I'm just gonna get right to it here. We're gonna get to it pretty quickly, but I'll show you the, uh, the holster that I've been carrying is this Kydex holster that I made five years ago. Let me go ahead, go ahead and unload this. We'll talk a little bit about it empty gun but this holster is one i've been carrying for five years and i was actually making it for somebody else and i messed up on one of the little rivets right here i mean it just kind of boogered up and i was like hey i'll make you another one and i've been carrying it because it works good i mean five years I, i've been carrying this holster and it still works as good as the day it was made it's just starting to look a little beat up so uh i thought hey you know what, I'm gonna show how you make a new one. And here, let me lay out the stuff real quick and then we're just gonna get right into it, so. All right, we're at step one. Get all your stuff laid out. First thing you're gonna need, I'm just gonna point out real quick, you're gonna need your Kydex. You saw I already uh, actually drew out what I needed right here. I kind of measured this and doubled it. Always leave a little extra room. It always takes more than you think to mold something. I've got my weapon mold for a Glock 43. Um, I got a few things on here, like this is where I'm gonna put my rivets. So I have it a little spacer there to hold it away from the gun. That way the rivets or screws, whatever I put in there, will not scratch the side of my slide. Uh, you always need a razor blade for scoring. Uh, you can use any time. You don't have to hold it and press in hard. You're not cutting the Kydex, you're just making a little mark in there. And I'll show you how to do it in a second. You always need something to mark with. You need your, uh, you know, pen or whatever, or pencil. Got a little rivet setter and a hammer there. I'm gonna need some uh, sandpaper for later, sanding off a few fine things, my safety glasses and my uh, heat gun. So besides that, I'm gonna need a few tools over here. I've got my little oven over here, and then I've got my uh, bandsaw that I'm gonna use and my Kydex press laying there, which you've seen in another video. But all right, I'm gonna start getting this stuff prepped up. I'll come back to it in a minute. All right, so moving right along, I've got my Kydex scored. I put it about double what I need there because you always have to have a little overlap here for any of your connections and stuff you make. So that, that's gonna work out pretty good. Like I said, I've got the uh, little spacer right here because this is where I'm gonna put my belt clip. It's gonna be about like that and I can can it however I want to, but it's just to keep the uh, screws away from it. You're like, okay, why do you have uh, this ruler or piece of metal on here? This is because I'm gonna leave a tab hanging off the back when I do it. So it's gonna be in there about like so. And I'm gonna end up taking the tab while it's still hot or I may have to use the heat gun and I'm gonna try to fold it back over and end up making more of a thumb break on the holster right here. I've never tried the thumb break, so we're gonna try it here to see how it works and probably rivet it back to itself and just have a little bulge over the top for a thumb break to help if you're carrying it in some cargo shorts or something like that. So uh, I've also got my oven preheating right now. It's preheating to 285 degrees and we'll see how that uh, works out for us. But I'll pop it in there and we'll be back in a minute. All right, I got it out. I'm gonna put it in there in the taco style and then I'm about to put the clamps on it. All right, so the secret is pull it kind of tight around the weapon itself and I've just got it hanging out, which is fine because most of this part is gonna get cut off anyway, except this uh, back little tab right here that I'm gonna end up trying to fold into a thumb break. All right, I went ahead and cut this part so I can show you right here. The best thing to do is you start at the back of basically the slide and you draw a continuous curve and you go just above the trigger guard right here because you're always going to have time to buff it down a little bit and sand it down. So this gets you to where you can actually get a full grip on your pistol. And next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna end up cutting off this area right here, the excess, because you actually want the bottom of the trigger guard to be open. And that, that's a mistake some people make. If you try to make it too tight, the weapon will get stuck in there. Um, I've already drawn a couple of dots right here, there, and there. Those are where my rivet holes are gonna be. I've decided to change instead of putting, sometimes I go here and then other times I go here with a couple of spacers. Uh, the reason for this is most of the grip on your weapon, you don't want it clamped on the barrel. You want it on the trigger guard itself. Uh, so that's where you're actually pulling the direction straight out of the holster is right here at the trigger guard. So basically I'm putting uh, my belt attachment, whatever style you're going to use right there. So that basically it's pulling directly up when you try to pull your weapon out. That way it's got the maximum hold right uh, where it is. Otherwise the weapon, if you have it, if you have it too far one way or the other, and you have a lot of pressure here, the weapon will try to cant as you're pulling it out and it will just kind of twist the holster. 
All right, the next step is we've cleaned off some of this area around the trigger guard here. And you notice we've left a little bit there because it's gonna be sanded down. And also, if you need it a little bit tighter, you can always heat up and curl it in just a little bit, just for a little bit of extra retention. Uh, I ended up curving this off right here and cutting the end of the barrel off just for compactability. Uh, as you see, it's open on this side, which is what I prefer. It makes it easy to put it in holster and it's gonna be facing the front of your body if you're making a right-handed weapon. So basically your belt line will be right here. So basically you put your uh, belt attachment and you put it in there and where your belt line, that's where it's gonna stop. So about that much will be sticking up out of your belt line. And once I end up uh, putting the sander to it, it'll be a little bit lower than that. On the back side, however, you want to create kind of a sweat guard and same thing. And this is going to be also cut down a little bit, but you see, this is the sweat guard you normally make. And this is a, just a sight channel. So it won't really be there. I have it basically, you want to stop it right on your slide just so it creates a barrier and it doesn't cause sweating on your body, but where it sticks up a little bit, I'm going to fold this down and end up trying to rivet it together. And it'll be okay if the, uh, back of the slide sticks out just a hair because this uh, being folded over will, will also make kind of a barrier and push it away from your body slightly just to make it easier on the draw. Okay, we're still making progress. I've got my holes drilled here for my screws and I'll end up putting uh, some spacers in there, some rubber washers uh, in between there or outside depending on the fit because that way it'll be a tension screw. You can always uh, adjust it by tightening or loosening the screw. This one I'm putting a rivet in mainly because I like the, uh, the color and the offset, but also because a, a rivet just goes a little bit flatter in there and that way it will not scratch the gun when you tilt it away a little bit. This is where I've bent the uh, piece over and I'm still gonna clean that area up so it's not squared off at the bottom. It's just my rough profile right now. And it's gonna see, as you see right there, it's gonna kind of make a little thumb break up at the top. So when you pull your weapon out, say you're wearing gym shorts or something like that, it gives you, uh, a thumb break and then I'm also going to try to put um, some some divots in there basically stipple the top of it and hopefully it'll make more sense once I'm done with it I'm not going to stipple the inside of it because that would be rubbing on your belly or something right there so just on the top so just to give you a good grip for your thumb so all right for the first time making this little rivet thumb break it seems to turn out pretty good you see I rounded these ends off right here um, with a little bit of sanding on the back side, you're gonna see it looks a little bit boogered up, but uh, that's because I took the sander and sanded it down. I don't want anything scratching my slide. So I, I basically, if you look at it sideways, bent it out just a little bit so your thumb can easier fit on it outside your slide. And then I sand it down because I don't want any rough spots on the side of my weapon here. So uh, I, I thought that worked out pretty good. Um, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna put some other stuff in here. I think I am going to, instead of cut this off more, I'm gonna curl these in just to make a little tighter fit around the uh, uh, trigger guard. Uh, and then I gotta do a little more sanding. I'll show you how it's going. All right, I try to dry fit there with an unloaded weapon and it seems to fit pretty good. I got everything sanded off pretty good. And uh, yeah, uh, most of all the little burrs and stuff off. Now it's time to actually put the screws in. I normally don't go with a uh, claw here, which some people, some people like it. Some people don't. It basically it's to hold this presses on the inside of your pants is to hold the weapon close to you. So it doesn't kick out from your body. Now I've got my belt attachment, which is right here and I'm going to put it on and I've got a couple long screws cause I'm going to go through the claw also. And, uh, well, it did a dry fit. Everything fits pretty good. I've got it all taken back apart now because I am going to stipple the top of it here just for better grip. Um, I'm not going to go into detail about how to do that because I have another video on stippling for beginners, but this is the head I'm going to use. kind of makes a dragon scale pattern, kind of like uh, on my actual weapon itself. So um, I'll get to it, and then I'm going to fit it all up and show you the end result. All right, for the recap, you saw all the stuff I just got undoing. I have my new holster, and the things I need to come in on are... I, I got the uh, stippling on the top. I mean, it looks all right. You can see the pattern's not too good, but it feels pretty good. That's the point. Compare that, this is the old holster that I've been carrying for five years that I made five years ago. I mean, it's, it's it works good still. It's just looking a little beat up and rough and stuff like that. Uh, other things I wanted to point out about this holster is I did put the claw on here to, that way when it presses your pants on the inside, it, it hugs to your body. It doesn't kick out. So the, the basically the handle of your gun doesn't kick out and print in your shirt. That's the reason I have it. 
Um, I'm trying a new clip right here. I'll turn it sideways. It's kind of a little J hook that basically it goes out, your pants go in between here, but then it hooks under your belt. So that way you don't have a clip uh, like basically printing over your belt. So I'm gonna give it a little try. We'll see how it works over here. Um, other than that, key things on here when making a holster, because you saw it, but when you, this is an empty weapon, when you put it in, basically, you wanna have a good purchase on your weapon. So any amount right here needs to be shaved down so that when you actually grab it, you're basically your fingers slide all the way up on it and you feel the bottom of your trigger guard right here. You don't want anything else blocking it. If it is, you're not getting your full hand on the weapon and then you'll have to change your grip after you pull it out. And you don't want that to happen. You want it to come out just the same way that you're about to use it. So that is the point of that. I forgot to comment on it when I was uh, making this earlier. Uh, also, uh, as just a technique, I end up putting, uh, I just take a little bit of oil, like gun oil, and, and I rub it just like with my finger inside the holster. That way it slides out easily. I mean, it's still got, you know, good retention. And then of course I've got the thumb brake if I need a little extra to pull it out there. It works pretty good. Uh, just something I've always done. You don't have to, just a technique I use. And when I got done, I had sandpaper and I sanded all the little rough edges around here because I didn't want it snagging on any of my clothes or anything like that. Just I, I just took the fine sandpaper and ran it everywhere. So uh, j just other little techniques like that. Let's see, was there anything else that, if there was some stuff that I blew through that I did not talk into detail enough, you know, please make a comment on it because if it's about stippling or something, I have another video on it. Um, if it's about like the, the temperature of the oven over there, I have another video on a, on a knife sheath. It's like 285 degrees and then I put it in there when it's warming up and just let it stay. When it gets 285, I leave it for two to three minutes depending on how thick the uh, uh, Kydex that I'm using is. So if, if you do have questions on it, because I, like I said, I did this pretty quick. Uh, I didn't want it to be a super long video. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do one yourself at home. I mean, it's not the best quality one I've done, but uh, you know, I just, I did it quickly. You saw everything I did. It's got good retention, mm -hmm. but then it still comes out easy. So that's the point. You want it to have retention so that when you hold it upside down, that's, that's what I like to do. Hold it upside down and shake it. It does not come out, but yet you can still pull on it and it will come out. So that's my test. <laughs> Some people be like, oh, can you hang a five pound weight off of it? Well, the answer is no. It, otherwise, it'll be, you'd end up ripping your pants off trying to take it out. Other than that, if you have any comments on other holsters you've tried that have not worked, or if you've had some problems where it didn't work, wrong heat or something like that, hey, let us know. That's a regular guy's opinion.